Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of Controllers Tech. This is another video in the register-based programming series, and today we will see how to use the external interrupt. I will focus on F4 series mainly, but wherever the changes are needed for F1 series, I will cover them too. Let's start by creating the project in Kyle ID. Let's give some name to this project and click save. I am using STM32F446RE. Here we will only select the CM Sys core and the device startup files. Now inside the project folder, let's create a main.c file first. In this main file, we will create a main function, and a while loop inside it. First thing that we are going to do is, copy the clock setup files inside our project. Now we will include those files in our project. I hope you remember this file from the first video. Let's copy the rccconfig.h in our main file. Create a function to configure the GPIO pin. Here are the steps given to do so. First we need to enable the GPIO clock. Then set the pin as the input, and finally set up the internal pull-up, or pull-down resistance. Let's start with enabling the GPIO clock. In this tutorial I am using the pin PA1 as the input pin, so we need to enable the clock for the GPIO A. This can be done in the RCCA HB1 enable register. As you can see here, the zeroth bit controls the clock for the GPIOA. So we need to write a 1 in the zeroth position. Next we need to set the pin as input, and to do this, we modify the GPIO mode register. To set the PA1 as the input pin, we need to write 00, zero in the second and the third positions. And now finally, we will configure the pull up and pull down register. But before doing that, let's see how the button is connected. As you can see here, the button is connected to the pin PA1 and the ground. So if we keep the pin in the pull-up mode, and then press the button, the pin will discharge to the ground and it will read as a low. So keeping the pin in the pull-up mode is somewhat easier, and safe too. To set the pull up or pull down, we will modify the pull up or down register. Here we will be using the pull up mode, so we need to write A01 to the third and second positions. This completes the pin configuration in the input mode, now let's write another function to configure the interrupt. To configure the pin as the external interrupt, we need to follow some steps, and they are shown here. First of all, we have to enable the system configuration bit in the RCC register. This will basically enable the configuration controller clock. Then we will configure the external interrupt in the system configuration register. Next we will disable the mask on the XD line, using the interrupt mask register. Then configure the rising or falling edge trigger for the interrupt. 
And finally we will set the priority, and enable the interrupt. Let's see them all. First we will enable the sysconfig bit in the RCC register. To do that, we will look into the RCC APB2 enable register. Here you can see, the 14th bit of this register enables the system configuration controller clock. But if you are using a F1 series MCU, like F103C8, you have to enable the alternate function I.O. clock for this purpose. To do that, you have to write a 1, in the 0th position of APB2 enable register. Since I am writing this program for F4 series, I will continue using sysconfig bit. Let's write a 1 in the 14th position to enable this clock. Next we will configure the external interrupt in the sysconfig controller. As you can see here, the external interrupt config register 1 can control the XD line 1, to XD line 3. Similarly config register 2 can control XD lines 4 to 7. And in the end, we have config register 4, which can control XD lines 12 to 15. Since we are using pin PA1, we would need the XD line 1, and therefore we will modify the config register 1. If you want to configure this line for peer port, we need to write 0000, in the 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th positions. If you are using F1 series MCU, the external interrupt registers are exactly the same, but they are part of AFIO registers. So you need to do the same, but with A, F, I, O registers, instead of sysconfig registers. Now we need to disable the mask on XD line, and to do that, we will modify the interrupt mask register. As you can see here, writing a 1 to the respective position disables the interrupt mask. So we will write a 1, to the first position in IMR register. Next is the configuration of rising or falling edge. This can be done in the rising trigger selection register, and falling trigger selection register. Basically writing a 1 in the respective position, will enable the rising trigger. And the same goes for falling trigger also. But should we select a rising edge trigger, or a falling edge trigger? Well that depends on your requirement, and your connection. Let's see the button again. Here the pin PA1 is pulled up by the internal pull-up register. When we press the button, this pin will connect to the ground, and the pin will be low. This is considered as the falling edge, because the signal went low here. As long as the button is pressed, the signal will be low. When we will release the button, the pin will be pulled up again due to the internal pull-up and this will be considered as the rising edge. It's better for us to use the rising edge in this case, since it will be triggered when we release the button, instead of when we pressed it. 
So we will enable the rising trigger for XD1, by writing a 1 in the first position. And I am also disabling the falling edge trigger for this XD line. Now we will set the interrupt priority. We will use the inbuilt NVIC functions for this purpose. So go to the startup file. Here you can see the list of all the interrupt handlers. We are using XD1, so we need this handler. Let's copy it and go back to the main file. Here we will call the function NVIC set priority. The first parameter is the interrupt, so copy the handler here, and replace the word handler with N. And now give the priority in the next parameter. Remember that lower is the number, higher is the priority. That means zero have the highest priority, but since we are using only one interrupt, it doesn't matter what priority you give here. Now we will enable the interrupt, and to do that we will call NVIC enable IRQ. This completes the interrupt configuration. Now let's write the interrupt handler. Remember that we have to use the same name, that is provided here. These are the steps, for the interrupt handler. So basically we will check which pin have triggered the interrupt. Then we will process our data, and clear the interrupt pending bit. Let's see the pending register for more details. So what happens is, whenever an interrupt gets triggered, the respective interrupt pending bit is set in the pending register. We can use this to check which pin has caused the interrupt. Then we process our data, and clear this pending bit. So first we will check if the interrupt is caused by the pin PA1. If it is, then we will clear the pending bit. I am going to use a flag here, which will be set, whenever the interrupt gets triggered, and we can later use this flag in the while loop. Actually it would be better if we process the data first, and then clear the pending bit, so I will fix this in the final code. Let's create another variable, which we will increment, every time the interrupt is triggered. Now let's write our main function. First of all we will initialize the system clocks. Then configure the GPIO. Next configure the interrupt. Now inside the while loop, we will check if the flag is set. If it is, then we will increment the count variable, and reset the flag. Let's create a function for delay also, which can take care of the debouncing. I think I need to use the 32-bit variable here. Add some small delay. Let's build it. We don't have any errors. Go to options, and change the frequency here according to your main clock. Select the stplink debugger. Ok let's debug this thing now. I am adding this count to the watch expression.
Let's run it. Seems like it's not incrementing. Let's add a breakpoint inside the interrupt handler. Looks like it's not able to execute this statement. Pay attention guys, as this is able to come to this line, that means the interrupt is definitely being triggered by the PA1. And something is wrong with clearing the pending bit. So after I went through the datasheet again, I found out that the bit can be cleared by writing a 1 in that position. And I was writing a 0. Let's write a 1 here. Now build, and debug again. Let's run it now. As you can see, now the count is incrementing. Whenever the button is released, the count gets incremented. Note here that, as long as the button is pressed, nothing happens. But when I release the button, the count increments. This is due to the fact that we used the rising edge selection here, so the interrupt is only triggered, whenever the pin goes to high again. This is it for this video. I hope things were clear, and you understood the external interrupt. You can download the code from the link in the description. I have attached the files for both, the F4 series, and the F1 series. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.